I wonder if you have thought any more or gone into the question of fear, which we talked about the other day. Have you? Do you remember we talked about it? Where is my friend? Come on, sir. I need support. Where is the other? I was asking you, if I may, whether you have talked, thought, or talked over with your teachers about fear. Did you? Hmm? Yes? yes. What did what what was the outcome of your discussion or your talk? Sir, so we have to still practice it, sir. You couldn't practice it. We have to practice it still more. Now, what do you mean by practicing? Repeating, 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 repeating? Yes, sir. Uh, trying not to be frightened, sir. What? Trying not to be frightened. Trying not to be frightened. Do you try not to be frightened when you see a cobra? Do you try or just run away from it? Huh? Run, away. run away. So why don't you run away from fear? Don't try to be. We cannot see it, sir. Huh? We cannot see it. I mean, we cannot uh, see any <coughs> fear. You are quite right. Snake is visible, but fear is not visible. So it's much more difficult to look at it, to observe it, to face it, to understand it. Right? So, what will you do to understand, to face it, to look at it, to be completely inward nature of the thing? How do you proceed? Do you understand my question? How to get rid of it. Huh? How to get rid of it. Not only how to get rid of it, but how to look at it. First, you must look at it, mustn't you? Before you can get rid of it, you must look at it. Right? Will you look at your fear? Will you? Do you know what it means to look at something? Don't run away from it, sir. No, that's right. Don't run away from it. Don't suppress it. Don't try to explain it. Don't try to analyze it. You know what an analyze it means? The word analysis? No? <laughs> to examine it, to go into details about it. Don't do all that, but just look at it. Right? As I said to you the other morning, just look at a flower. You can tear it to pieces, then it's no longer a flower. But just look at it. Right? In the same way, can you look at fear? You may not, you may not have the time, sir. You haven't somebody the time. Somebody is doing something to you. Yeah, somebody yes. is somebody is doing something to you. They will get frightened. Hmm? Now, can you watch that fear? You have to watch your thoughts. What? Who told you that? Well, I try sometimes, but I, I'm not too. Um, I keep slipping off from it. So you watch your thought, hmm? right? Have you watched your thought? Not too often. Uh, not too often. But have you done it at all? Once or twice? Sometimes, 
Yes, when you have done, when you have observed, when you have looked at your thought, what did you find? I have understood myself. What? I have understood myself. I have not lost anything. You have a thought now, haven't you? Now, can you, can that thought be observed? Go on, sir. You are pretty smart. Go on, tell me. You have a th- you are thinking now, aren't you? Huh? So, when you are thinking, can you observe you are thinking? Oh, you can, can't you? Now, huh? Yes, sir. Yeah. Now, wait a minute. What do you find when you observe your thought? It's always running. Huh? It's always flying about. Yeah, it's always flying about. <laughs> now, can you look at one thought without letting it fly about? Can. Huh? I can. can you can? Now, can you do it now? Can you watch your thought as it comes into be into your mind? Can you watch it? Yes. yes. Now, what do you find when you watch the thought? You understand what you're thinking about, sir. Don't feel. Huh? You understand what you're thinking about. Now, wait a minute. What? Uh, yes, you understand. Take one thought. Hmm? What, what, what's your thought? Take one thought. Well, I look there in assembly. Uh-huh. Then when I thought, when I look there, hmm. I thought about the exams, ICS exams. Now, you look at the assembly and you think about your exam. Now, when you think about your exam, what is that thinking about the exam? Have you, have you listened to my question? He is thinking about examination, right? Now, what is that thinking? Not about examination, but the very thinking. Huh? Fear of the future. Fear of the future. Fear of the future. Now. Can you observe that fear of the future? The fear as it comes up. Have you ever seen a film in which a, a bud is flowering? Have you? They do it very, 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 very slowly and takes a lot of time and the bird, the, the flower comes out. In the same way, can you watch? You are thinking not about examination, but in thinking. Huh? You can't, can you? Not right. Not yet. Why not? Not right. Huh? Not right. You haven't yet tried it, sir. Try it. Do it now. <coughs> Take your time. Because it's very important to understand what is thinking, not about something. Not about your examinations, about your parents, about your teachers, about what you're going to do the next moment, but the thinking itself. You understand? Yes, sir, what do you mean? Huh? I can't understand. You can't understand it. I'll explain. You can th- look at that boy and say, he's my friend, right? Or you can think about your examinations. Then thinking about it causes fear. Now, or think about your home and hope and you like to go home. So, all that thinking is about something, right? Clear? Thinking about. I'm asking you to find out what is thinking, not about. Thinking is. Uh... Just have you understood my question? Yes. I want to know what is thinking only. That's right. (coughs) Sir, thinking is actually just a movement of the mind because the the mind can't keep still at all. 
So you think, you say that thinking is born out of the mind. Huh? You agree? Right. Do you agree? Yes. That all of you are listening? Yes. Good. <laughs> so thinking is born out of the mind. And what, what is the background from which it is born? Yeah, I said thought is related to something. You're thinking, you're always thinking about something. Now, I'm asking you to find out what is thinking only, as you pointed out, not about something. It's your thoughts. Pure thought, hmm? which arises in the mind. Now, you know, a flower goes, grows out of a soil, right? Without soil, there is no flower. So, there must be a soil out of which thinking comes. Your mind. No, wait. Have you understood my question? Yes. Huh? You have understood a it? Base. Huh? A base. A base. A base. A ground. A soil. A, a field out of which it can come. Right? So I am asking you, what is the field, the basis, the earth, the feel out of which thought comes. Ca think it out very carefully. You understand my question? Yes. What is the cause of thinking? Have you understood it? Understanding. Huh? Understanding. No, no. Listen carefully. The flower comes out of the soil. Thought comes out of some soil. What is that soil? Careful, think it out slowly, take time. Don't be impatient, yes? So when a thing happens, when you start thinking about it. What? When a thing happens, you think you think about it. Memory. Huh? Memory. She says the soil is memory. Memory. Who says that? You say the soil is memory. By Joe. Is that right? That's right, isn't it? Yes. You saw this snake yesterday. You remember it. Hmm? It is put in the mind. And you think, thinking about the snake because you remember it. <coughs> so thought comes out of memory. Understanding, sir? But that comes later. I'm just observe what I'm talking, not understanding. Understanding comes much later. The soil out of which thought comes or arises, this, that soil is memory. Right? <coughs> Clear? <coughs> and what is memory? Thinking about your past. No. Huh? Your past experiences. That's right. About Let that. Keep. <laughs> so, thinking springs, comes out of memory, right? Memory is <coughs> the past experience, right? Now, the past experience is memory, and the, the thought springs from memory comes from memory. Now, what is experience? Exposing yourself to something. Exposing yourself to something. Now go on, ex uh, go into it. I'm asking you, please, some of you too, I'm not talking to these two only. I'm talking... Huh? Huh? You're involved in the incident which you think about. You involved in an incident. That is, you are driving a car, and um, well, you have an accident. I hope not, but you may have an accident. Then, that is an event. So, 
experience is an event which has taken place in the past. Huh? You're clear? Right? You have understood? You, have, you are driving, you hit somebody, that is an experience. An experience is something which has happened in the past. Right? So, <laughs> go step by step, right? The incident, the experience, the memory of that incident, the memory is the soil out of which comes thought. You got it? Clear? So, thinking is memory, is the response of memory. Response means coming out of, responding. I ask you a question and you respond. Right? So, the event, the experience, the knowledge of that experience, right? That is memory, and from memory comes thought. You've got the you got the sequence. So, but don't you think we are living in the past world then? You are living always in the past. You're quite right. Right? But you need it, sir. Huh? But you need the past. You need the past. You're all, where are you all brought up? You're all too smart for me. Huh? So, first understand how thought comes, how thought arises. An experience, like the car, the incident, the experience, the memory, the thought. Now, mathematics is sequence, isn't it? Yes. Huh? Sequence means order. Right? Yes. Have you got it? That is, the incident, the experience, memory, memory thought. thought. Got it? You're clear. Right. You do something first, for the first time. Huh? When you're seeing something for the first time, and you're thinking, what about it? So you see something for the first time. Hmm? That's a, that is an event. That's a happening, isn't it? Hmm? But you cannot relate it to anything else. Yes. At that time, that experience, you cannot relate to anything else. That's right. So, that event, that seeing that thing for the first time, and you remember it, right? The remembrance is the memory of seeing that, and from that memory thought comes. Got it? Even though it's the very first time. Right. Now. <laughs> hmm? if, if you see a flower like this, huh? if you see a flower, uh -huh. you you are not the first time you are seeing a flower. Mm -hmm. You won't be able to relate that flower with anything else. You never see. Yes. You have never seen a flower before. You won't be able to relate it to anything else. Yeah, that's right. But you think about it. You look at it. Your mind re remembers it. The remembrance is memory and thought. Yes. Right. That's later. That's later. So, uh, and, uh, what? If you think about that child, at that child, there is no memory over there. Of course there is. You haven't seen the flower in, before. You have never seen the flower before, right? Would you call, if you have never seen it before, a flower? Maybe uh, answer my question. You wouldn't call it a flower. 
Audio? So you have learned something careful. Listen carefully. You see something for the first time. You can't name it, can you? The moment you name it, it becomes memory. You start thinking about it. Yes. You got it? That is, anything you see for the first time, don't name it, but look at it. But the moment you name it, it is already a recognition. Therefore, it's a memory. Got it? Right. So, either you think in sequence, or you think disorderly. It's not in sequence. You got it? Sir, do you mean to say every time we look at something, we have to look at it in a new way? Now, that is, when you look at something, can you look at it as, as though for the first time? Hmm? Yes. Can you look at that flower? Can, no, I won't call it. Can you look at that color, that thing there, and see it for the first time? Can you? you? Have already seen wait, it. Wait, wait. I know, I know. But just find out. Don't be quick in your answers. Can you look at that thing as though for the first time? Huh? Why should we? Why should we? Why should we look at something as though for the first time? What, what do you think? It doesn't mean I'm taking time to think about it. <laughs> what do you think? Huh? Then you, you can look at it properly. Quite right. You have learned something. That is, if you look at that thing, you're, you have looked at it so many times, right? And therefore you say, well, that's a flower red, and move on. So, huh? Now I know that's a flower. Mm -hmm. Now if I go there and look at the flower properly, it'll huh? be it. I'm seeing a flower properly. That's right. That is, if you look at the flower for the first time means to look at it without memory, right? Right? Without thought, just look at it. Then it is the first time. No, sir, no. I, mean, I, I know that's a flower. Yes, don't call it a flower. Okay, okay. don't say okay. <laughs> but I know it, sir. Huh? But I know it. Right? But I knew it already. No. Now, you have sat beside me for the last three days, right? Four days, or whatever it is. I have looked at you. Hmm? I have called, I know your name, because Ms. Ra no, Mr. Narayan has told me your name, where you come from, and so on. So, I have memory of all that, right? Right? When I look at you, all that memory is operating. Memory is operating. Right? So I never look at you, but memory is operating. You never think. You never see. You understand? No, you're not quite. No, no you don't. <laughs> you mean to say you don't see it, uh, see the person? That's right. You don't see the person, but you see the memory. You got it? You understand what I'm saying? No, be clear. If you don't understand it, I'll explain it ten times. You don't see the person and you relate him to something. That's you right. Think about him. That is, I think, I am thinking about you, your name, where you come from, where your, what does your father do, where your town and so on, so I don't see you. If I don't go through all that, then I can look at you, can't I? You got it? So you mean we, we don't study the person in the right manner? That's right. If we have memory? That's right. You, I, you, no, look, 
you have hurt me, right? Suppose you have hurt me, call me a bad name or a something, or you hit me. So I have the memory of that, right? So when I meet you next time, I, I don't look at you, but I have the hurt, the memory of that hurt, right? So I never see you. You understand that? Have you been able to get over this? I, that's, no, I'll show you how to get over it later. But first, see if I, you have hurt me, and I remember that hurt, and when I meet you next time, that hurt comes up. So I don't see you. Got it? Got it? Good. So what, huh? so what do you actually mean by seeing? Is that not a thought? No. I mean by seeing, no. I look at you. No memory. No memory. I look at you. I see what you are. I see your colour, your, I'm, I examine them, you follow? I'm looking at you, not looking at you through my memory of the hurt. You have understood it? Good. Sir, do you mean to say, if a snake is going, I tip it, and it turns back and bites me, it, and then I've uh, got rid of the poison all. And next time when I see it, do you mean to say I have to tip it again and see what happens? Of course not. That would be too, too stupid, wouldn't it? Yes, so then that memory... So the way, so find out, find out what it means. That is, you've seen a snake, it has bitten you, and you got over the pain, and again you are going along for a walk, and you see that snake. And will you allow that to bite, it, bite you? No, sir. No, which means what? Because I've Wait, 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 listen to it carefully. That is, you are still thinking that it from the past, aren't you? Now, is that the operation of intelligence? Yes. Huh? Yes. But it also, uh, it also involves memory. I said, I know it involves. Now, you haven't understood my question. This, even the old people don't understand this. So, Take it slowly. I, I'm going along for a, for a walk, and I'm, do, I'm not paying attention, and the snake bites me. The, the pain, the healing of the pain, and then it's memory. Memory is there of being bitten, being, having pain, going to the hospital. The memory of all that is there. Now, next time I go out for a walk, I meet the snake. Hmm? Can I look at that snake and not, be, and not be frightened of it? You can be, but... No, not can be, but... You haven't... Do you mean that without memory, you can conclude that the person is changing every time? Quite right. Because you... <laughs> I have hurt you, you have hurt me, right? And I, I have memory of that. And <coughs> next time I meet you, I look at you through that memory, right? <coughs> but you might have changed. You might have, you might be a, say, I'm so sorry, I've hurt you, and you have changed. But I remember the hurt. So I have not changed, but you have changed. Right? You get the point? So. The snake, <coughs> might, the snake would not have changed mostly. <laughs> <laughs> You're pulling my leg? <laughs> of course not, the snake is not going to change, because the snake is, is frightened of you, as much you are frightened of it, right? So, and this nature of the snake, 
not to, it doesn't want to be hurt, therefore it bites. So you should avoid it. Avoid it. So what are we talking about now? Come back. I said to you, did you think about fear? Right? Right? And you have talked it over with your teachers? If you have, have you? No? You haven't. Why not? Huh? I just thought about it. You thought about it, but you didn't talk. talk to, good. Now, are you free of fear? Yes. Why not? Because there's always a thought. A thought. So, so, you have found something. Careful now. Listen carefully. You have found thinking brings about fear. Have you? Yes, it always does. No, thinking about your examination makes you afraid. Through my mind. No, I said, listen carefully. Don't be too quick. <laughs> Thinking about examination brings you fear. Now, that means thinking about the future makes you afraid. Right? So, can you stop thinking about the future? I do not. I might. The roof might fall down, I might get hurt. Right? And so I'm frightened. I'm frightened I might die tomorrow. I, they might, I might die tomorrow, therefore I'm frightened. So thinking about the future is the beginning of fear. Got it? Have you understood that? Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. But you could, how could you stop thinking about it? I'm, I'm going to show you first. <laughs> We have to stop thinking about the past and, and the present, sir. Yes, sir. Think what's going to happen in the future. I'm going to show you. I'm going to first understand the whole process of thinking. Then you can go into it much more. But first, get the principle of it, the law of it, the sequence of it. You got it? Now, thinking about the future causes fear. Thinking about death, thinking about the public opinion, what they might say, thinking about examinations. Therefore, thinking about the future brings fear. Or thinking about the past, where you have been bitten by a snake, and therefore there is fear. Right? Thinking about the future or thinking about the past brings fear. Understood this? Is this clear? Is, have you understood this? Really understood it? Not, not here, <laughs> not verbally, but understand it. Right? It should be only the present. Huh? No, I'm coming to that. Thinking about the past or thinking about the future brings fear. Right? Have you understood this? Understood it in the sense like you are like you have understood that's a microphone. As clear as that. Right? So when, when you don't understand something, then you're frightened of it. That's right. That means when you don't look at it and examine it, yes. you might get frightened about it. Yes. So examination, looking at it now does not cause fear. Go, go slow, go slow, go slow. Looking now, right? That is, you are not thinking about the past or the future, and therefore there is no fear. Right? Right? So, first understand that law. The law means sequence. That thinking about death, thinking about what you, your father might say, thinking about your teacher, he might scold you, or thinking about a pain that you have had in the past and be frightened of that. So thinking about the future and the past is fear. Got it? Now, go slow, very slowly.
that is. <coughs> so I, we said thinking is <coughs> a happening, an event, experience, memory, thought. So thought, listen carefully, thought is always the past. Right? Future. Huh? Future. It pro- th- the future is what thought projects. You've got it carefully. Underst- understand this very clearly. Then you will see what is involved in it. Event, a happening, experience, memory, thought. So thought is the outcome of memory, which is the past. All thought is from the past. Got it? Can be from the present also, sir. Huh? Can be from the present. You will find out present. First listen to what is being said, that thought, which is not born out of memory, is always the past. Huh? You have fear because you are careless. You have fear because you are careless. That is, fear because you are careless. That is, careless is the state of mind when you have not understood the whole movement of thought. <laughs> right? So, See clearly, your thinking is always from the past. Clear? So can you, and that thinking says, projects or see, sees the future. Hmm? So thinking from the past goes through the present and becomes the future. Right? Yes. Clear? So the question then is, can you look at something without this movement of thought? I don't know what to do. <laughs> Not what to do. I'm going to explain it to you. Do you realize, do you realize that you always live in the past? All human beings live in the past. Huh? Yes, sir. Clear? Always the past. What my father said, what I did, what I should do in the future, which is the the future is the past. Yes. So your human beings, all human beings, live in the past. Wait, can, huh? We learn about past also. Huh? We learn about past also. We learn about the past also. <coughs> Past? We learn about the past. You are learning about the past now. In history, sir. Huh? In history. History, sir. History is about the past. No, no, just listen carefully. What is history? Learning about the past. Learning about the past. Learning what? About our life. Huh? About our life. Life. He says about ourselves. Learning about ourselves is about yourselves. That is, it is history is the story of man and woman, right? So man and woman have created this society, right? And this I won't I'm sorry, I mustn't complicate it. So Learning about man and woman is history, right? Which means learning about yourself. Because you are the result of the past. Right? So when you study history, you are learning about yourself. Your violence, your anxieties, your fears, your wars, your kings, all that you are learning. 
right? <coughs> My Lord, may I take a few minutes? So, what do we get by learning about the past? What do you get? What do you mean, get? Huh? It just satisfies man's curiosity and learning. Yeah, it satisfies his curiosity about what he was, what his great grandfathers did, what his great great grandfathers did. It's curious to know what human beings were like, what human beings are now, and if they don't change, what they will be. What is curiosity then, sir? What is curiosity? Wanting to know about something. Huh? Wanting to know about something. That's right. Wanting to know about something. Now, just stop a minute. I'm asking you, have you, underst have you seen how fear is born? Yes, sir. No? Thinking about the past, thinking about the future. Now, can you stop? Is, uh, is it possible to stop thinking about the past or the future? Live with a blank mind. Huh? Live with a blank mind. Live with a blank mind. What does that mean? <coughs> no, you know about every. You know a great deal. How can you have blank mind? Then that's about, uh, it's from your memory, sir. I'm, uh, no, listen carefully. You haven't listened. I'm asking you something, if you don't mind, if I may ask you. Have you understood from your heart, not from just words, from your heart, have you understood that thinking about the past, thinking about the future, brings fear? Hmm? Yes. Now, there, to be free of fear, what is implied? You, are not, you do not think about the past or the future. That's right. To be free of fear is not to be involved in the past or in the future. Can you do that? I don't, huh? I don't know. Sir. You don't know. Do it. That is, don't think about the past or the future, which brings fear. Therefore, to have no fear is to be free of the past and the future. Hmm? Got it? Can you be free of the past? past pain, past hurts, past memories, and the thinking from the past to the future brings fear. Therefore, there is no thinking of the past or the future. So we have to look at everything in a new way. We first get the principle, first. Understand this first, and then you can apply it. You have discovered something, haven't you? That thinking itself is fear. That is because you have, been, have you understood that? That thinking itself is a movement of fear. Yes. Huh? So can you? You can, you can continue thinking, if you can think only about the present, instead of thinking also about the past. Yes. So, how can you think about the present? Because, because thinking is memory, which is the past. So, if you think about the present, it is still the movement of the past. Right? You know, this, is, this is involves, you may not be able to do it, 
this involves real meditation. This is real nature of meditation. I won't go into it, but I'm just telling you. If you have understood that the past and the future contain fear, thought itself is fear making. Therefore, when there is fear, there is no love. Yes, sir. Huh? You understood? Therefore, thinking is not love. So why must we love each other? Huh? Why must we love each other? Why must we love each other? Why do you think you should? Not must. Why do you think one must have love? No coordination. Sir. Huh? No coordination. No? No coordination. That is, if you have no love, are you saying there is no coordination, there is no harmony? Yes, sir. Is Everybody that it? will be thinking differently. Yes. Have you found this out? Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. Which means you love people. Yes. Sir. Huh? Do you love your father and mother? Huh? Yes, sir. Of course. Yes, sir. But you are frightened of them, aren't you too? At times. At, at times. So, can love and fear go together? At, at and answer my question. Get the principle. I cannot. Huh? I cannot. Therefore, when you have fear, there is no love. Yes. Right. So, hate, anger, jealousy, envy, can't go with love. deny love. Right? Right? If you are jealous, you can't love. If you are frightened, you can't love. If you hate, you can't love. And love is necessary because without that, you have no harmony in life, as you call it, coordination. When your father beats you, you forget it, and then again you love him. When your father beats you, you forget it, and again love him. But you have the memory of that beating, haven't you? Huh? <laughs> this is too... Only for some time, sir. What? Yes. Only for some time. You only have it for some time. During that time, you don't love him. Yes. <laughs> but that's, that's not always. It's very, very few times. Does your father beat you? No, sir. No, good. Don't be beaten by anybody. Don't allow it. If anybody tries to beat you, say, sorry, sir. Don't beat me. So by the time you say no, that just listen carefully. You understand? Beating is very wrong. It, especially when you are young, you are sensitive. You mustn't be beaten. No hurting, sir. Huh? No hurting during your young. Yeah. That's not being carried out anywhere. Huh? That's not being carried out anywhere. That is not being carried out anywhere. That's not being carried out anywhere. Which means what? That, that you are beaten? No, uh, the scolding. Scolding is enough. It hurts more than beating. That's right. Don't be allowed to be scolded. It's wrong to be scolded. I beat you for your own good. I'm angry with you. Don't accept, don't accept being beaten, scolded. It makes you insensitive. Sir, but we can't control the other person's tongue. You can. You tell him, don't scold me, sir. 
He may not have to listen to you. Huh? He does not have to listen to you. He will, if you mean it. So how does he find out you mean it? By your voice, by your gestures. Sorry, sir. I am not going to allow you to beat me. Let me listen. Do it. He could do it forcibly. Huh? He could do it forcibly if he wants. If you want to do it, you will do it. Right? If you think it is wrong that you should be scolded, stand up and say, "Don't! Be, I won't have it." Agree to you what, what you say, and he beats you. Then what do you do? You cannot do anything to him. Wait, wait, wait! Don't say you cannot do anything. You would say, "I won't be beaten," and he beats you. Then go to Mr. Nara and say, "Sir, this has happened." So if my mother hits me, I go and go to Nara. Huh? If your mother beats you, take her hand and say, "Darling, mother, don't beat me." <laughs> so, in that time, yeah. she might beat me once more. Will you do it? Yes, sir. She hits me. That's right. Do it, <coughs> mummy, darling. Don't beat me. <laughs> then she will understand that it hurts you. You understand? Then the mother becomes sensitive. You understand? The other day, last day before yesterday, when we met here, I asked if you would kindly sit still. And if somebody, that gentleman, asked me. I'm afraid, rather cynically. Why should we sti sit still? And one of the girls, I don't know who it was. That girl said, "To gather energy." Uh, do you agree to that, sir? No, I don't. Why not? I think energy comes to you when you're relaxed. That, that's the whole point. Sitting quietly relaxes you. So he means to say we are forcing ourselves. No, don't force yourself. If you want to sit still, sit still. <coughs> Though, if uh, here, if and I ask you to sit still, if you don't <coughs> feel like it, don't sit still. Just walk away. Right. Have. The, do what you think is right. Don't you follow? So, if everybody does what he think is right, there'll be a lot of commotion. <laughs> Quite right. If everybody does what he thinks is right, there'll be a lot of confusion. Now, what is right? Nobody knows. Nobody knows. So. As nobody knows, everybody is doing the wrong thing. We don't know, sir. We can never find out. <laughs> so well, do you know what the right thing is? Do I know what is the right thing? Right with regard to what? Right action. Huh? Right action, as you say. Right action. Where do you draw the line? Huh? Where do you draw the line? I'm going to show it to you if you are interested in it. And not cynical. You see, that's one of our calamities. As we grow in schools, when they go beyond 14, 13, 13, 14, they grow into all kinds of troubles, problems. They become rather hard, cynical, and, you know, rather snooty, worldly. 
what is right action? <coughs> is it right action? We haven't time. I'm just going to point out this to you. Is it right action which is based on prejudice? No, sir, I don't mean that way. We, 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 we're going to find out. Go slowly. If I am prejudiced and I act according to that prejudice, is that right action? No, sir. No. If I have opinions, is that right action? No. Sir. no. If I say, I believe, hmm? and act from that belief, is that right action? No, no sir. So, opinion, belief, prejudice, prejudice any action born of, out of that is not right action. You have learned something, haven't you? So, right action is when there is no belief, when there is no prejudice, when there is no opinion. Leave it at that. We'll, I'm, going, I'm here for the next fortnight, so we'll go into it further. Is that all right? Do you want to sit still? I'm asking you. That gentleman is there. I'm asking him, do you want to sit still? If you don't, please get up and go. Right, sir? Nobody is going to scold you. At least I won't. And don't be scolded by anybody.